So we had an incredibly horrific day yesterday and I feel like it is, well, I don't feel like it. I mean, the truth of the matter is I own 100% of the responsibility and the blame for what happened around here yesterday. I made a huge mistake. My mistake was, is I just assumed a weed was a weed. So we were out weeding the big garden yesterday morning and we were pulling everything out that was growing. Started weeding, loading up a bunch of the weeds, put them into a wheelbarrow, took them over to the goats. Tossed it in there. They went about as normal. Uh, Robert and I had a meeting um, with our web designer. And as we were getting ready to leave, we walked out the back door here. I heard a goat just going crazy. And I lo looked over at Robin and I said, what's that goat raising cane about? And at first it just sounded like normal. But then on the second or third bleat, I was like, that sounds like distress. And so we beat feet over there. And uh, I get to the door. And I found Gretchen laying on her side. And I thought, well, maybe she's in labor. And I looked over there and I said, I don't think she's in labor. So I walked over there and there was no sign of her being swollen, no milk. And when I kneeled down, I put my hand on her belly and I, right then and there, I said, no, it's bloat. Somebody get me a needle. <clears throat> and so the girls, everybody started running, scrambling around, looking for a needle. Dessa went one way, Carol went another way, I showed up with a box of needles. I took one and I hit her. Within 15 seconds, she was dead. Dessa started bawling. And I spun around and I just started looking at the other goats. And they all looked like maybe they could be a little bloated. We're trying to look for signs of worms, but we just dewormed them. And I saw bellies. Just everybody looked swollen. It looked like whatever was inside the pen was what was causing a problem. I started to try to push them out and uh, Robin thought they were getting away from me. And so she went to try to push them back in. And I'm like, no, 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 get them out. Let's get them walking. So we pushed them out of the pen, started encouraging them to walk. And Negan and Karen were just, but like they were getting ready to be the next to go. And meanwhile, Jason was trying to get Jess on the phone to try to figure out what we could do. And I said, hey, I need your goat brain right now. And, uh, and I told her everything that was going on and everything that happened. And about that time, I heard Ladessa scream. Daddy, daddy come quick. And Wilma was just like in this crazy like fog and all of a sudden she just fell over. And uh, I ran up here to the front and Wilma was down. And by the time, you know, and I mean, she went quick. Then became two goats down. And so now I got two dead goats. Now, Robin was over there walking with Barney and all of the babies and they, to me, were the least of my worries. Those two and the babies, they were walking around, they were running, you know, investigating. Robin was having a hard time trying to keep them out of the garden. And we were trying to drench all the females. And then about that time, Barney started acting funny. He started getting kind of dizzy and wobbly. Well, we found Karen, we drenched her and we were massaging her and Robin screamed out something about Barney. I couldn't, couldn't quite hear. <clears throat> and so walked up and Barney was still up walking, but he was kind of walking a little bit slower. And, uh, and so I grabbed him and I drenched him. Now I did have an opportunity to drench Barney earlier, but he was still moving and running and everything. And I'm like, okay, I don't think you're as bad. You may be able to process it naturally by walking and running and everything. So I didn't focus my time on trying to catch him right then and there. Now I'm kicking myself in the backside for not doing it. Um, because the goat that, the, that I ran to go tend to Karen, when I could have drenched him real quick, if I could have got a hold of him, 
ended up dying anyway. And so I drenched Barney real quick and he kept walking. He walked away from me. He just kind of, he did, he, you know how goats do that little skip thing and they keep on walking. And I was like, all right, maybe he'll, that, maybe that'll help him. So I was charged with watching the babies because we still have four baby goats. And so I was pushing them around, walking them around. And I was doing that with Barney and Barney was doing just fine. But they just kept acting like it wasn't getting any better. And so I pulled myself away because we lost Karen in that point, in between those two. So now I got three dead goats. And so I, I just said, I have to pull myself away. I've got to go Google this to see that if I'm given enough, if, I, if my dosage is right, if I need to add something to it. I came back out, we, Carol and I mixed it up and we just started hitting everybody. We got Negan, we started hitting all of the kids that were around and Barney started walking this way and we walked but he was staggering and he wanted to just constantly lay down we went to go uh, we walked up to get him and then he went down and when we got him he fell he dropped and he was dead and we're looking around at each other like dumbfounded because I mean it was just this mass like everybody dying just falling like flies i mean like i've never seen something happen so fast like and it felt like it was never going to stop the best way for me to explain how i felt in this situation it was like i was in a firefight and i was pinned down i couldn't move left without somebody dropping i couldn't move right without somebody dropping and I just kind of was like I was stuck. And no minute, no sooner I would be over here taking care of these these goats than I'd get screamed about these goats. Some, something was going on with something over here. And so I was doing my best to try to keep it all together in the chaos and running back and forth, running back and forth. One minute, everything was okay. And the next minute, I'm looking at dead goats on the back of my tailgate of my truck. So that was four goats that we lost in less than 10 minutes. Like I'm telling you, when I tell you that they dropped like flies, no sooner would one drop that we were having to deal with the next one. And of course, Des is all beside herself. It's killing me. I don't know what was worse between the sound that when they would start bleeding before they would die or listening to my daughter just like lose it because she, she loves these goats like these are her babies but then we got to Negan and Negan was acting like he was gonna go down too and actually he had gone down like we thought we were gonna lose him but we drenched him and we started massaging his belly and we waited but then Negan pooped and I went, hey, that's a good, I think that's a good thing. And then a couple of the kids pooped. And I was like, okay, so I real quick texted Jess. I said, pooping is a good thing, right? The things that you text your friends sometimes, that's how you know what level of friendship that you're with with, with some people. Um, because you can text them about anything. And she, of course she came back, she said, yes, pooping is a good thing. And so then Negan pooped again. It's like, okay. But then he laid down, but he didn't let, he, he laid down like he was getting ready to chew his cut. And so we got him over here, right about in this area where I'm sitting right now, got him in the shade, and I just watched him. Because if, he was basically gonna be the next one to go if we were gonna lose another one. The, the, the kids were still rambunctious, jumping out of the tractors that we were trying to keep them in, running Robin crazy. Uh, I think Robin even slipped and fell one time um, while she was chasing the kids. And we just kept massaging Negan, kept massaging Negan. He drank a little bit of water. He got up, he started walking around, he started nibbling on some plantain. And so then I was like, okay. So I watched him for about another 15, 20 minutes. Then I texted Jess again. I said, eating is good, right? And she, yes. We started watching them. And 
everything just started to, to seem like it was just starting to calm. It was like that calm before the next wave, whatever. And so we got our Gallagher goat net fencing up and we put them all in there around all this plantain, got them a bunch of water, and we just watched. And so far, here we are, it's the next day. And everybody's fine, everybody's belly has shrunken back down. Everybody seems to, the ones that are left, that are, there's, they seem to be doing okay. But that was four goats, three females and our breeding male. So to say that we're devastated is probably an understatement. The entire family, we started to calm down. Odessa was able to regain her composure. Now she never stopped working during this. She didn't, she was a trooper. She didn't, you know, just stand there in the corner and cry. She's crying as she's massaging Karen or as she was massaging Negan. And, and trying to get them to walk and come on baby let's just take a few more steps come on baby let's just take a few more steps and <clears throat> it was heartbreaking to watch her go through that <sighs> and I knew I failed her I had the perfect opportunity to be the hero, to be, to be the hero to daddy's little girl, and I couldn't do it, no matter how hard I tried. No matter what I tried to do, I mean, this is not the first time that we've ever had to deal with bloat here on the homestead. I mean, we've been doing this 15 years. We've had to deal with bloat before, We've had, but never in goats. We've had a, a bloat in a pony where we had to get him to swallow the the hose so to release the gas and then he got up walking around we had to deal with it with cows where we've had to get the hose down there to release the gas hit them with the needle to release the gas and they would get up walking around and it's not the first time that we've ever lost animals on this homestead but i think this might have been the hardest one because of how it happened and the fact that, well, at least for me, realizing that I'm responsible for this made it 10 times harder. Because not only could I not be Ladessa's hero, I'm the villain that caused it. But then later, once everybody had had a chance to process it, I heard Ladessa say to me, she said, you know, mom, this might not have been that bad of a thing. And Ladessa came up to me and she, she sat down beside me and she put her head on my shoulder and she said, well, daddy, maybe this needed to happen anyway. And I'm like, baby girl, what are you talking about? She said, now we get to start over. We get to, you know, create our own bloodline with this and i thought for somebody who basically had their their guts just ripped out because of watching her babies just suffer and die this little girl was looking at me trying to find the silver lining now that's not to say that we're not hurting because of the four goats that we lost it goes to show you the resilience of a homesteader to face death, to face defeat, to face failure. Take it dead on the chin and pick yourself up, dust the dirt off, and go right back in there swinging. And say, it's gonna be okay. There's gotta be a silver lining in there somewhere. So, to all of you guys, we love you. We're sorry that this was a sad video today. But this is our life, this is what happened, and so we wanted to bring it to you. Thank you for stopping by the Big Bear Homestead. God bless, and have a nice day.